Well, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for being here, whoever you are, wherever you may be. Let the word of the Lord encourage you today. James chapter 5, verse 13. Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. If you've ever been called, you ever got a phone call, you ever got a text, can you come pray for somebody? Can you come pray for me? Can you come pray for my loved one, my children? Can you come pray for my father, my mother, my aunt? Can you go visit somebody in the hospital, my cousins in the hospital? Situation is dire. Doctors don't know what to do. They don't have the answers. They said, get our affairs in order. And if you've ever been called, if you've ever gotten those text messages, it's because people believe in your relationship with God or your ability to touch God. And there's a great responsibility that comes with that. If you have access to God and they know that God hears your prayers and that you can affect the situation by calling out, reaching out to God with sincerity and with faith, that you can reach into places that maybe they can't in your prayer life. And you can connect with God in ways maybe they're not prepared to connect with God. And you can connect with God on a level that's, that's deeper, that you can, you can move the hand of God. You can touch the heart of God. When you touch the heart of God, it moves the hand of God on, your, on behalf of this situation. So if you've ever gotten those calls, you know what a great responsibility it, it is and what a great honor it is to be called to pray for somebody not just in the hospital, but over a situation when somebody knows, man, I don't know. I don't have the answers for this. I've tried everything I possibly could. I don't know how to get past this. I don't know how to see that door open. I don't know how to turn this situation around. I don't know how to get over this. I don't know how to forgive. I don't know how to get past this. And they ask you, will you pray for me about this? There's a great responsibility and a great honor in that. When James says, is any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint them with oil and pray for them in the name of the Lord. Whatever we do in word or in deed, we do all in the name of Jesus. We do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whether we pray for somebody for healing, whether we Pray for a situation to change. We do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. We gather together in the name of the Lord Jesus. We lift our praises to the name of the Lord Jesus. We baptize for the remission of sin in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything we do, we do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Invoking the name, not just coming out and saying, oh yes, I'm doing it in by the authority of Jesus Christ, or I'm doing it for the purpose or for the betterment or for the glory of Jesus Christ. That's, that's not what doing something in the name of, but to actually invoke the name of Jesus Christ. When I baptize somebody, I'm doing it in the name of Jesus Christ, calling out his name over them. When I pray for somebody for the healing that God would touch them and intervene, that he would touch them from head to toe, that he would move through their body and do a miraculous work that no man on earth can do, but God alone can do. I call on the name of Jesus. The one who shed his blood, whose wounds 
and stripes and piercings had purchased my freedom and my healing and my deliverance and my forgiveness. James said that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We have a responsibility to keep ourselves in line with the will of God. I have to keep my relationship intact with God because I want him to hear my prayer and I want to have that confidence to go before the throne of grace and say, Lord, I need you now. I need you to move in this situation, God, like only you can. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man accomplishes, avails much. It does miraculous, wonderful things. Not just anybody. James didn't say just when anybody lifts their voice up and prays, but no, the, the effectual, fervent, it comes with tears and with sweat. It costs you something to offer up that kind of prayer. It avails much. It affects much. It touches God. It breaks through barriers. It pushes through crowds to move them out of the way until I can touch just the hem of his garment and get his attention. If you ever get called to go pray for somebody, answer that call. Don't shy away from it. Don't say, wait, wait. Well, let's wait till uh, we got service in a couple of days. Let's take care of it then. You don't have to, well, let's wait. Let's gather the crew. I, I don't really have that kind of confidence. If you get those calls, it's because somebody has confidence in your relationship or your standing with God. Don't let them down. Who you are in public, be also in secret. Don't let them down. When you get that call, you show up and you offer up that strong, strong prayer and allow God to move in the situation and change somebody's life and allow God to use you and build that confidence in allowing God to use you. It's not a performance. It's a natural thing touch God to communicate with God when you have that close relationship with them it's just a display of that relationship remember the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man a righteous woman a righteous senior a righteous child accomplishes great great things